seems a shame to have to cut it all up inside but uh, I need it for something okay that's the two sections of this large TV set taken apart emptied out and now I have a very strong uh, box with a hole in the front okay so I've put the front and back sections together this is one of those old early flat screen TVs where are we look super flat but when I've put the two together I've given it a good clean inside because as all large electrical units you know they get dusty inside and uh, I want everything to be clean what I am impressed with is the actual size inside look if I go inside here we're inside a TV set guys there's a lot of space in there there really is lots of room inside there now to give you some idea of the size here there's an N-Gage Loco at the back there. So I've just taped these pieces of paper together. That line follows the back. I want a small cutout here, which I'm going to draw in. And then I want to draw in this curve there and I'll draw in the curve on that side so I've cut the shape out that's roughly where I want it now I'm going to transfer that pattern onto some hardboard so I traced the lines that I drew on the paper onto some hardboard and I've cut that out with a jigsaw to make a floor and you can see that fits in there quite nicely I'm not sure if that's going to be the actual floor or whether I'm going to use that just as a solid surface to build upon and you can see here that I have some N-gauge flexi track and I'm just testing to work out what kind of radius or radii I can use. So this piece of hardball gives me a good idea of the internal dimensions of the layout. And this is a rough estimation of the curve I need at the lowest level. So what I've done is I've marked out with a pen these the outside positions the furthest distances between the front and the back of the track so now I'm going to try to work out a curve I'll use this this is um, just the, the floor to work from, from for the time being so I'll use that to try to get a smooth curve the smoothest I can in this in this uh, location okay, so I've used the center line and a pivot with a pen to create a perfect half circle there now I've got more room to move over, but that's easily done now. I can stretch this, I can extrude that, and do the half circle right out to there if I want to. But that gives me a line now to, to make a nice even curve. As I want the, the connections to be in straight lines as opposed to on the curves, I'm going to bend this piece from around here. It will take me around the back. So the next piece of track the connections will be fairly straight lines. This is where blue tack is helpful as an extra hand. It will hold the track against the line as I move the next piece along and, uh, and we'll just keep it through. Okay, so that's holding the line quite well. I'll give that five minutes to get some memory in there and then I'll just work out where I want it to be with regards to the edge, whether I'm going to move it along at all. I may do, I may not. I'll just have a work out of the distances side to side. Okay, internally we've got 25 inches 
I if I say uh, for comfort 18 inches, so 25 by 18 for this level, which is above this lip. What I will do is I'm going to cut this protrusion off because that's not necessary, and I may even take this. It's only three quarters of an inch big, but this box. I would prefer if that wasn't there, so I may just clean that out a little bit. Okay, now I couldn't get a saw in this section, so I used a hot soldering iron to just warm and remove those pieces. This one there, that's off. Of course, melting plastic, no good, so all done over by the window. That is, I think, the most important thing uh, in this room, the window. Right, there's a, a hole there now. I mean, <clears throat> if you're building model railways, if you're in the big scales, then every foot counts, smaller every inch, something like this, every millimetre counts, so that's good. And that actually may turn out to be handy at some stage for wiring and things like that. And also, it's the door that the small people who live in the railway, that's how they get out to go home. Okay, I've cut tonight. some hardboard, uh, masonite I believe, also known as, to the required size, the width at least, not the depth. <clears throat> and I've just transferred a few points from this one onto that one, where I want the, the first section of track so, to be. I've transferred the information I need from that uh, base piece onto this, uh, which will be the track bed, and I've copied that onto this side to give what would appear to be a simple oval. Now you may be thinking that's a lot of trouble to go to to make an oval. Uh, you would be right, but this is not an oval in as much as this piece of track will not be linking up with that piece of track this layer will be moving up in this direction and also back so it's the height and the depth that are important as well as the width so this is going to be a single track and it's going to behave as a helix that's going to be extruded in this direction and this direction so I need this to take me up Right, and then back down again somehow um, and I want to get as much track bed out of a single piece so I'd like to get from say here around here and then maybe another one up and out here to around there maybe and then pick up from here and get some more from up there and <laughs> And that's the next challenge. So here then is a mock-up of the gradient, which is a 1 in 30. So I start from 0 down there. Comes up 30 inches, up to 1 inch, another 30 inches, up to 2 inches. And that's roughly how I pictured it. That's pretty much what I wanted. It lifts the track it's allowed me to make the track bigger this way, which is what I wanted. So, And it will now allow me to bring this track further out and then back across to create some kind of interesting shape in the track work itself, as opposed to just going around the, the track and perhaps move in and out before it goes back into the tunnel. I've decided to extend the base there out further. I had the idea originally to start down low and get up to this um, out above this ridge as soon as possible but the idea of starting low was to give me lots of room to move up. Um, I don't need that much of a gradient. The way the tracks working I don't need such a steep grade with that piece cut out at the back this lifts up nice um, with an extension I can bring the track, I mean more base 
distance this way gives me more track and more scope for modeling so now the track is coming up above this area even with a lower grade I can lift this up and come at the I'll be at the same elevation anyway uh, and then I can come out right onto this piece here and then come back across so I cut that out also these two protrusions there give me a good reference point to which to to slide the 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 actual railway onto so that's quite good okay so I've been outside to cut the next part and that just fits together there comes over the front goes out on that oversails that uh, ridge there off into the back and around to there the second level has gone in comes around here increments of half an inch at uh, these four points around the, the layout. I've used these aluminium, aluminium strips to create a kind of a cantilevered support for the track where it oversails the original baseboard. I knew that was going to happen so I had this idea. I will be fixing something stronger into there at a later date but for now, I'm happy so, with that. Although the original, the, 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 the first track comes down and it's behind this, I plan to cut this section out, quite a sizable section, and put an, uh, a timber bridge, an open well, structure bridge. It's going to appear from a tunnel here. Come around here, you'll see the loco there, and then again, as it comes around here, then it will go through another tunnel, into behind the scenery, the scenics. It will then reappear, come around the front up here where it will disappear again so you can see what's going on here and then it will come around in the back and reappear again there. So now it's a case of what I want to do, I can't keep on coming in a in a cone so I need to now get this track to curve and come uh, over at some point here, another bridge, and then off in this direction around there, and then back inside the scenery again, up to another level. Right, I'm getting into it now, so let's put some cork down. Okay, so I have the cork cut. <clears throat> I'm just using one of these sponge brushes to paint on some PVA onto the track bed and I'll lay the cork on there. Okay there's the cork, I've cut that uh, out of a single piece so that's uh, nice and even for the track. The next thing is to fix the track on that piece and then I'll start to do a mock-up of the rest of the track. I'll do the mock-up of the track and I, but I won't connect it because once I've built that I'm going to remove it then I'm going to fix the track and do more work on this section while I can reach around inside there. And I'm doing a mock-up here of where I want the track to go. Now I've marked out with a pen and I've tested the track for this curve. So the next track is going to come around here then it's going to go back which brings it behind the first line that's down there. So it'll come back over there then across and then it will come inside of the other tracks here. So now we're, we're, we're moving the track in this direction. I've stopped there because I have lots of room at the back now. So rather than try to do a really tight curve, I'm going to take the track all the way to the back in a quite larger curve, all the way around there. 
and then that gives me space to come up again. go. Some track, some power, and a loco. There's a few hours work there, but I have to say I'm pleased with it so far.